okay either this shirt is gonna wash me out or it's gonna look okay guess we'll see with the end product Hi everyone and welcome back to Big City B. I'm B for those of you who are just joined in for the first time. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Today I'm going to be reviewing Platform 7 by Luis Doty. Some of the basics for this book. The genre is going to be horror, but a psychological horror and a little bit of thriller mystery, although I think that horror is the better genre for it. There are some trigger warnings for this book, so make sure you check out the description below to see what those are. Okay, on to your summary. Platform 7 at 4 a.m. The Peterborough Railway Station is deserted. The man crossing the covered walkway is confident he's alone. But what he doesn't realize is that he has company. Lisa Evans knows what he's about to do as she tries and fails to stop him from walking towards the edge of the platform. Two deaths on platform seven in 18 months? Surely they're connected. No one is more desperate to understand their connection than Lisa Evans herself. After all, she was the first of the two to die. On to the characters. We have Lisa Evans, who is the ghost we see haunting the Peterborough Railway Station. Ooh. That's a tongue twister. Say that three times fast. Then we have Maddie, who is Lisa's boyfriend. We have Dalmar, who is the night security guard at the Peterborough Railway Station. Then we also have PC Lockhart, who is a police officer at the police station across from the train station. Then we have the station master, who is either named Melissa or Melinda. I returned the book before I wrote down her name and I can't find it anywhere who is in charge of running the Peterborough Railway Station. See, now I'm just gonna try and say that as much as possible to see how tongue-tied I can get. We have Thomas Warren, who jumps from the platform and is the second death in 18 months on Platform 7. And then we have Caleb, who is a handsome looking guy that Lisa's ghost becomes infatuated with and starts to follow when he enters the Peterborough Railway Station. On to what I liked about this book. The first thing that I liked about this book was the idea of what it means to be a ghost. Where can a ghost go? How much does a ghost remember? What is their physical form? Do they have any superpowers as a ghost? I thought this was all very interesting and was really kind of what grabbed me in the first couple pages of the book. The second thing that I liked about this book, not necessarily liked, but I thought was good, was the depiction of Maddie and Lisa's relationship. While it's not a good relationship, I thought it was very authentic and realistic. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, so you're gonna have to read the book to find out what their relationship is. On to things I didn't like about this book. The first thing, let's just get this right out of the way, throw in a spoiler slide, There is no connection between Lisa and Thomas's death. He jumps because he's a pedophile and she jumps because she was in, well, she doesn't really jump. She like unknowingly got stuck on the tracks because she was running away from her abusive boyfriend. So no, there's no connection at all. So I thought that was very misleading in the summary and I was looking throughout the whole book to try and figure out what their connection was and there's, there's no connection. The second thing that I did not like about this book was that I felt that the story was too convoluted with too many sidetrack characters. We have Dalmar, we have the station master, we have Caleb, we have the mortuary assistant, we have Lisa's best friend's sister. It just was too complicated and their stories didn't add anything to Lisa and Maddie's story. So I feel like anything outside of Lisa and Maddie's story could be cut. Also, I'm not sure what the point is for us to get invested in these characters that we don't see anything about later in life. Like, we know almost nothing about Dalmar throughout the majority of the book, but then in the last chapter or so, we learn a little bit about his relationship status. And I just, as I was reading it, I was like, why are we, why do we need to know this? It seems like Luis had other story ideas or other book ideas and then just kind of crammed it all into this one and it, it didn't make any sense. So I didn't like that. The third thing that I didn't like, I felt no emotional bonds to any of the characters. 
I thought they were all pretty boring. Yeah, I get it. Maddie's not that great. Lisa's got low self-esteem, but that didn't make me like any of them. I didn't really like any of the characters. So that was disappointing because it made it very hard to stick through and read the whole book. The fourth thing that I didn't like Either the editing job, I guess the editing job, but I felt like there were spelling mistakes or grammatical mistakes. I could be persuaded that they are um, UK English spelling and slang or UK English colloquialisms, but they didn't seem intentional and they were very random and they seemed like one-offs, so I don't know if that's a bad editing job, but I, just, I didn't like that either. The fifth thing that I didn't like, the ending was tied up too neatly. I felt, okay, great, that's nice. And I never wanna feel that way at the end of the book. I either wanna have an emotional reaction or I wanna be left with a thought that makes me sit and simmer for a while, but I don't wanna, eh, feeling at the end of a book ever. On to quotes from this book. The first quote, the dead don't bother haunting graveyards. They are the last place on earth they need to haunt. The living do that job for them with their messy combination of grief, desire, and imagination. I like this because I always picture graveyards or cemeteries to be like teeming with spirits and ghosts of people who are there. But after reading this quote, I kind of agree. Like there are other places that they could be haunting that are much more interesting. And living humans do have a greater capacity for feeling grief or imagination to haunt those places themselves. So interesting, I like that. The second quote, the water gets hot very gradually. And as far as the frog is concerned, there is no one point where it gets dramatically different or bad enough to jump out. So this quote comes in a little bit later into the book when we see Maddie and Lisa's relationship. And I think it's a good metaphor for an abusive relationship because the person who is being abused or the victim is the frog. And from the beginning of their relationship to when they see a point of it's getting bad or it's getting too hot, the water is too hot, they can't really pinpoint when they realized that the water got too hot or when they should have jumped out. But looking back, they can see that, yes, the water was hot and there were these red flags around. Thankfully, I haven't been in any of these kinds of relationships, so I can't speak personally to that front. But from what I've heard from friends or have read about from autobiographies, that seems to be a reoccurring theme is that they didn't realize until after. Moving right along and finishing this review, would I recommend this book? I think you already know. No, I wouldn't recommend this book. I thought the summary was a lot more interesting than the actual book, and I feel like the summary was misleading. If the book was, I don't, I don't know. If if the summary, if the book would match the summary, if the summary matched the book, I feel like my expectations would have been managed a little bit better. But because there's just that jarring difference between the two, I I didn't. I didn't like it. Also, as I said earlier, there's too many background stories that didn't add to the book. It just felt convoluted and that Louise was trying to combine a bunch of different stories into one story instead of focusing on her main story. If you do insist on reading this book, because there were people on Goodreads who did like it, basically for the complete opposite reasons that I liked it. But if you do insist on reading this book, please make sure that you check out the trigger warnings in the description below. Some of the negative reviews on Goodreads for this book mentioned that they wish there had been a trigger warning because so much of the book deals with triggering topics. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Go ahead and comment down below what are some of your favorite psychological horror books? I definitely want to get into reading more horror books. I feel like I read a lot of mystery thrillers, but want to get into that horror genre a little bit more. Hit that like button if you like this review and make sure you're subscribed. Okay, everyone, I hope you're all well. All the best always. Bye.